Hi, welcome to today's episode of Start That Business Show. This is the show where we discuss different business ideas from startup to growth to the stage where they can actually bring you the profit that you are looking for. So in today's show, we will be discussing businesses that can be brought about by security needs. Today we will look at surveillance and to discuss this further, I have a guest on the show who will be giving us all the details about how to start this type of a business, how to run it and what you need to watch out for. I'm your host for the show, Evelyn, and we welcome our guest today. Welcome. Thank you, and I'm happy to be in your show today. Great. Could you please introduce yourself? Um, my name is Elisha Masesi. I'm a surveillance systems uh, expert and a proprietor of iWatch Kenya. Okay. Yes. Wow. So, for how long has iWatch Kenya been operational? I watch has been the business of uh, surveillance systems for the last uh, two years. It was started in 2018, uh -huh. we ran in 2018, 2019, and uh -huh. now we are starting our third year in business. Okay. Yes. How is it? Into the third year, the first year, the second, how is the third year going? Uh, I can say that uh, I watch Kenya is uh, picking well, yeah. and uh, I'm glad that uh, the market and customers are receptive and are willing to cooperate uh, to do business with us. Okay. Yes. So who are your customers? Uh, for that question, uh, uh, when uh, we first started, when I first started the company, I sat down, I did the research, and I decided to break my customer into three groups. Okay. The first group, I have uh, companies that are looking to systems that will help them monitor the activities as uh, production is going on. Mm -hmm. uh, the second set of uh, customers mm -hmm. is uh, homeowners, residential areas and uh, owners, mm -hmm. people who have uh, rental spaces and they would like to know the activities going into, to, into their uh, activities going in their businesses. Mm -hmm. Then the third one now is uh, personalized, personalized uh, homes where we are I'm looking at uh, where we look at uh, mothers mm -hmm. who are going on, on their daily work and uh, have small babies mm -hmm. where they will need uh, to have a look at their babies as they go on with their work because I've realized that uh, mothers are not comfortable when they cannot have a sneak and look at their babies <laughs> while at home. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Well. So those are the three categories of uh, customers that we look into. Okay. Yes. And uh, it's a corporate base, residential areas, then now we come to individual needs. Okay. Yes. So what prompted you to start this business? Um, previously, before I came into the surveillance systems, I was employed by an ICT company. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I went by my duties day on a daily basis, I noticed that uh, businesses were looking for surveillance solutions. Mm -hmm. I realized that uh, homeowners were looking for surveillance solutions. Mm -hmm. I realized that uh, mothers were also looking for surveillance uh, solutions. Mm -hmm. What I realized is that uh, the systems that were current there were either not sufficient for them, they were they, are, they had faulty systems, broken systems. Mm -hmm. Again, I realized that there was no maintenance and there was no consultation. Mm -hmm. So now I decided to step in and uh, fill that gap. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the product that you offer is surveillance solutions. It's surveillance solutions. To these yes. different type of customers. Yes, to these different types of customers. Wow. Yes. So what skills does somebody need to start this type of a business? Uh, the skills that uh, one will need uh, first, uh, you have to be dynamic, uh, you have to have uh, those interpersonal skills. I mean, uh, when you're looking for a business uh, opportunity and a gap, you have to approach people and uh, know their preferences, what they want, what mm -hmm. they're lacking in this area, and what you can do. Once you establish that, once you can talk to people, the other skills that you, have, you need to have is uh, a touch of... Uh, IT skills, mm -hmm. you you need to be a good researcher mm -hmm. so that uh, you can research what you really need to know about this business before mm -hmm. you even go into it. Mm -hmm. Yes. What is coming out very clearly is that you did your research very well. Yes, it's Other... a research. Okay. 
other than the experience you got from work, you also did your research? Yes, you do your research. Okay. Know the market, uh-huh. know what people want, know what is there and what is missing. Okay. Yes. Okay. I think you need to repeat that again because anybody starting any business must do research. Yes. So how did you go about your research process? So my research started way back when I was employed. Uh, as I have said at the earlier, I, we were working. As we went to companies to offer ICT solutions, uh, I noticed that the uh, cameras were either not working or the company did not have the setup in the first place. Mm-hmm. So I sat down and asked myself, what can I do about these customers who are, who are looking for these solutions? And probably someone else will come and offer the same service. So what can I do to them? So I sat down and uh, decided, since uh, we were offering internet services, I, I thought now uh, internet can uh, work well with the surveillance. Mm-hmm. Because you realize there are those people who work remotely and will want to have a look at their businesses. Mm-hmm. So I did my research uh, and uh, what I was uh, basically researching on was how to integrate internet and uh, surveillance systems. Okay. Uh, and now I realize that uh, there's a way you can uh, actually link your surveillance systems with the internet that you already have in your house. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, wow. So do you have any technical training in this field? Yes, I have a technical training. Mm-hmm. I am a electrical and telecommunication engineer. Okay. Uh, class of uh, 2017, yeah. Moyo University. Okay. Then from there, uh, patching the skills with mm-hmm. what uh, the skills, the education mm-hmm. was easy for me. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Do you think that somebody who has not gone through the degree course at Moyo University can be able to do this? Yes, anyone who has not uh, gone through the degree process, mm. anyone who has no diploma, mm-hmm. anyone who has no certificate, mm-hmm. can also go through the same process and they still uh, emerge as a good technician. Mm-hmm. Because when you look at the the professional how they are ranked, we have crafts, we have uh, we have people who have learned from just looking at others do their work. Mm-hmm. We have those who have gone professionally for, for uh, professionally for training, mm-hmm. like me, professionally training, mm-hmm. but. Uh, uh, under me, I can still train someone mm-hmm. to be a surveillance systems uh, technician. Mm-hmm. Once you become a technician, I'll give you field work to do. Mm-hmm. You gather experience. Mm-hmm. Once you gather the experience, of course, experience comes with the earnings. Mm-hmm. Once you do your earning, probably you can advance your you you can advance your skills. Mm-hmm. You can get a certificate. Mm-hmm. Once you get a certificate, it becomes easy for you to sell yourself out. Who the certificate? Sorry, where do you get the certificate? We have it. Uh, we have trainings for surveillance systems. Uh, mm-hmm. When you go online, uh, you can just uh, uh, you can uh, just Google mm-hmm. uh, surveillance systems uh, courses. Mm-hmm. You have we have companies that are willing to give a uh, free training, but now there you have to really be patient. You have to learn before they even uh, start giving something small for you as a statement. Okay. I watch is one company that. Uh, can uh, take a few number, a few number, a uh, small number of people, can have one or two. Mm-hmm. I go with them in the field, mm-hmm. they learn. Okay. We have uh, people who are really willing to learn. Mm-hmm. When you take them to the field, mm-hmm. they will learn first. Mm-hmm. Uh, those people, I mean, you can uh, really get them into the field and that they can uh, eventually have their own companies uh, running. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Could you tell me what is your day to day like? Uh, As a proprietor for this business at iWatch, what is your day-to-day bus- program like? Like so, my program, you wake up to, yeah. my program for the day starts a day before. Okay. Because uh, for this, uh, for these uh, systems, for surveillance systems, uh, calls come in. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, some a client will call you today mm-hmm. and tell you have this problem. I need a setup. So you book that client, mm-hmm. uh, you agree with the client to go and do a survey, mm-hmm. a survey on the premise, you know what is needed, mm-hmm. what is there, and uh, what do I need to add as a company. Mm-hmm. So my day starts a day before. Mm-hmm. I book in a client, then uh, the rest follows. The next day, when, uh, we have under, uh, when I've had an appointment with the client, I go and do a survey. Mm-hmm. Then once I do a survey, we sit down with the client. Mm-hmm. I offer my advice to the client. We look at the budget uh, on the client side and uh, the preferences on the client side and mm-hmm. what the client uh, wants to achieve in the setup. Mm-hmm. Then from there we get rolling. If okay. the client is uh, we are in agreement, the budget is okay, the venue, the, uh, the survey is uh, successful, mm-hmm. we proceed uh, 
with material acquisition and uh, site uh, installations. Mm -hmm. Once we do site installations, we do an induction of the system. Mm -hmm. Once we do the induction of the system, we also draft uh, an agreement where now we ask the client whether the client would like to have uh, maintenance sessions with us. Because these are systems that you really need to check uh, on monthly, two months time, you mm -hmm. come, you check, you do cleaning, mm -hmm. you do backups of the storages mm -hmm. and all that, yes. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So let's go to the next thing, which is, uh, do you think somebody needs a physical location to run this type of a business? No, no, you don't need a physical location. Okay. Uh, I mean, once, uh, like for me, once you've done a registration of your company, mm -hmm. You can uh, have a physical location, but uh, have it combined with some something else. Okay. You can uh, do stocking of uh, accessories, mm -hmm. so that uh, even if you get customers, now customers can still buy from you, mm -hmm. and you can still go and offer the service. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, today's dynamics, uh, mm -hmm. an office, an office now can be a virtual office. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at my pages, I'm uh, heavily present on mm -hmm. uh, Facebook, I'm mm -hmm. uh, heavily present on Instagram, mm -hmm. I'm active on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So that's how most of the times I reach out to my customers, mm -hmm. regardless of uh, having a physical space. Mm -hmm. Yes. That takes us to marketing. So yes. you actively market on Facebook, the and social Instagram, media yes. Yeah, yes. sites. Yes. Okay. So from the day you started, yes. How did you get your customers to know that, hey, I'm here, this is what I'm offering? And Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the question. So as I told you, the first, uh, I told you that I was employed in a ICT field. Mm -hmm. We used to do a lot of uh, customer support okay. on on site and off site. Mm -hmm. So there was a day, there's a day, there's a day we went to a customer site and uh, the customer told us that uh, they had done a, in, an installation of uh, surveillance systems, mm -hmm. but uh, the guy who did them was not uh, reachable on phone. Mm -hmm. and they could not trace the website. Mm -hmm. So I thought to myself, well, this is a, a solution I can offer the client. So I told mm -hmm. the client, okay, let me do this. Eh? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I can fix this. Mm -hmm. But since today we are on duty, uh, let me come tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What I did when I went back, I did my research on the setup. Mm -hmm. And the next day I was at uh, the customer's uh, premises. Mm -hmm. I sorted the problem mm -hmm. and then I realized, well, I can do this. Mm -hmm. and, uh, from there now, I started the process of having my name, mm -hmm. the company registered and uh, having the presence online. Wow. Yes. That's what we call uh, identifying an opportunity and yes. seizing it. Yes, and <laughs> seizing it. Yes. yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. So how much capital does somebody need to start in your view? Like in your case, how much capital roughly did you use to start? For me, you need the intellectual capital mm -hmm. because for me it was a zero startup. I mean, the, I started with the zero capital. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I only needed the, to get to the customer's uh, premises, mm -hmm. do my research and mm -hmm. uh, go and offer my services. Once you offer the services, you, you get paid. You charge people for, for what you've done at their place. Mm -hmm. So starting from, uh, if you're not looking to have a shop, uh, I mean, if you're not looking to have a shop where you stock, mm -hmm. then you just need uh, the, the will to do the job. Mm -hmm. the, you just need uh, to have accounts, mm -hmm. just need uh, to be present. You just need to tell people I'm doing this and I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. So next time someone will call you, someone will pay you. Okay. If they give you 10,000, now 10,000 becomes your startup capital. Okay. But you don't need, you don't really need to have that a uh, lot of money with you. Mm -hmm. to 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 start the business because you realize that even with the business registration mm -hmm. it's something you do over time you do a name search you reserve the name next time you go now start the process of uh, registering mm -hmm. so it's not really about the capital it's the will to start the business okay so with the with good money with, i mean with uh, enough money to go and see a client mm -hmm. arrange a meeting mm -hmm. you are good to go mm -hmm. and then everything else to align as you go okay yes I'm keen to know two aspects. Yes. <coughs> I'm keen to know two aspects yes. from the, the the last sentence you have just mentioned. Yes. How do you price? How do you know that for this type of a client or for this type of a service, I'm going to charge the ten thousand or yes. the five thousand? Yeah. Uh, charging of uh, surveillance systems, installations, mm -hmm. maintenance, and uh, consultation, mm -hmm. you charge according to the scale of the job. Okay. Uh, when you look at uh, how people price and how people charge for their labor, there's okay. always a percentage. Depending mm -hmm. on now the professional level you are, you've 
gone to you you've grown your company so what you do uh, when you when you're buying the material mm-hmm. we have two approaches there's a scenario where the client will uh, have the material ready mm-hmm. the installation material that is the cameras and uh, everything that comes with it in such a scenario you you agree with the customer for these materials have a uh, have a cost uh, cost around the uh, Hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. Out of the hundred thousand, I charge thirty uh, percent total as my labor. Mm-hmm. If it's uh, fifty thousand, you still charge thirty uh, percent. Okay. But you still look at other dynamics where, uh, I mean, if the client is giving you twenty thousand as labor, and uh, you have to go the way to Mombasa, mm-hmm. you have uh, local arrangements where mm-hmm. the client caters for transportation, mm-hmm. and accommodation, and anything in between. Mm-hmm. So that. Uh, it's not it's not a it's not an overkill on a, on your side okay so if you do a pricing you can give a cut of a 30% of the total you can give 0.25 of the total depending on the on the client and the location of the client mm-hmm. in uh, in places where we have to, you have to as a, as a as a business person you have to do a site survey prior to the job mm-hmm. and you're not sure the client whether the client will give you the job or not sometimes we charge the client Mm-hmm. some a certain amount of money so that when you when the client now decides to give you the job we deduct that from the the initial cost of the job mm-hmm. if the client doesn't give you the job you see now you'll have uh, sorted yourself you didn't incur the cost of uh, doing a site survey and mm-hmm. uh, when the incurred a loss on okay. a job that you did not get okay so these are some of the you find that these are some of the mistakes people do you are doing a startup but mm-hmm. uh, you end up going to Mombasa doing a quotation and doing a survey and uh, eventually fail to to get a job mm-hmm. you can sit down with the person uh, who needs the service mm-hmm. agree on a certain amount that will cater for you going mm-hmm. then once you have the job mm-hmm. you deduct it from from there okay. for me it's a security okay and if you yeah. don't get the job what happens if you either don't get, way yes. either way you, you cut it for I mean okay. someone okay. Pay, I mean the company you're going to work for has mm-hmm. paid for your transport as Paid mm-hmm. for you. It's, I mean, it's fair. Eh? Mm-hmm. If I'm going to see you for mm-hmm. business, then mm-hmm. uh, which mm-hmm. is going to incur some mm-hmm. cost on my end, it's okay. fair. We can share the cost. You can take the full cost. Mm-hmm. Then once we have the, now the business running, I mean, when you have the, we have agreed on a quotation, mm-hmm. and we can always deduct okay. the difference. Okay, I think that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. And I want to take you back to the uh, one of the points that you mentioned earlier. Yes. What are the licenses that you need? To start uh, this type of a business for this uh, type of business first you have to have a recognized uh, company mm-hmm. you go to register the register of the company now it's, it's, you start from me citizen mm-hmm. you do a reservation of the name mm-hmm. it's around uh, 950 mm-hmm. you run a few names uh, one comes up you pick that one then mm-hmm. now you proceed to now the actual mm-hmm. uh, company registration which mm-hmm. is under the companies act of Kenya mm-hmm. it's still online Yes. You, you can you can do it online they have templates where you fill your details mm-hmm. or you can do it through a lawyer mm-hmm. a lawyer has the, the document memorandum of association mm-hmm. the articles that you need to start your business and state your partners and all that mm-hmm. for a lawyer lawyers push it really quick mm-hmm. because they already have the legal legal uh, knowledge mm-hmm. on the, the business okay. yes so once you get certified on those Mm-hmm. Because uh, when you start with this citizen, now you specify what am I doing? I'm offering security services. Mm-hmm. So now the government is aware you are certified. Mm-hmm. You can do your your work. Okay. Yes. So all you need is a business license. Yeah. You. you An operating. You, yes, license. you need a business. Li- if you have a premise, you need mm-hmm. a business license. Mm-hmm. If you operating, uh, you have no physical uh, presence. Mm-hmm. You now do a proper company registration. Now if we have said you have to go to the register of companies mm-hmm. which can be done through e-citizen online mm-hmm. or you can see a lawyer to draft the required uh, the requirement uh, the required uh, documents for you mm-hmm. so once they they process the documents you get a message your mm-hmm. company has been approved mm-hmm. once it is approved you mm-hmm. are given now a certificate from with a certificate now you become a business regardless whether okay. you have a physical location or you are doing it uh, without a physical office Wow. So they actually give you a certificate where it's uh, documented you'll be certified to offer this kind of uh, services. Mm-hmm. It's a certificate you can take to the bank, you can have an account with the bank, you can mm-hmm. have an account with the Mpesa, mm-hmm. whichever other outlet uh, you need to have. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. uh, to do business. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now tell me, that out of the three years that you have operated, yes. how have they been? Uh, I can say 2018 when I uh, when I left the city business, the mm-hmm. company that I was working for, mm-hmm. it was tough because uh, it was a uh, time now to set base, uh, plan on uh, an entry market penetration strategy. Mm-hmm. So that was a challenge um, to get customers, customers to believe in your startup, mm-hmm. and it's a it's a young person is a, is a falling under the bracket of the youth of the Kenya. Youth, yeah. It was a challenge for someone to believe in a company that is uh, coming up. Initially, I did not have a website, so someone would ask me, so you've said that iWatch is a registered company, but where do I find you? I would uh, tell them in my office. But they would still insist on a website. Mm-hmm. I did not have a website, mm-hmm. so that was a challenge. In 2019, we had a website. Uh, we started, I started the process of business registration. 2019, we started. Uh, the company started picking up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so 2019, the company was averagely doing good. Mm-hmm. 2020, uh, we were we were taking root, and then we got uh, referrals and uh, a good number of customers. Mm-hmm. Yes. 2020 happens also to be the year that we witnessed the the COVID-19 pandemic. Yes. How did it behave for you in your third? Uh, Year of business. So 2020 was a uh, was quite unique, mm-hmm. uh, having uh, the pandemic with us, mm-hmm. and uh, guys were now leaving the offices, were leaving uh, their actual places of work. Mm-hmm. So I realized that they were actually needing their surveillance systems even more. Okay. Because guys, companies that had even stopped uh, using the and uh, had the systems not working for some time now were reviving them because. They were not uh, frequently coming to the offices and the few numbers of people who are coming in would really need monitoring. So a company that uh, did not have the system now really needed them in the sense that uh, they needed to monitor the activities in their premises when they were not there. Interesting. Yes. You are yet another case that I have heard that somehow thrived during the COVID-19 pandemic. Could say so, yes. Yeah, so whereas others were struggling, yes. yours was experiencing more and more opportunities. Yes. Okay. Yes. Wow. Could you say you're making profits? Yes, the company is making profits. Okay. And that's why it, it has been it has been able to 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 run for, for those years, twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen, twenty twenty and now this year. Okay. Yes. You How said. long did it take you before you realized the profits from year one, year two, and now year three? Uh, 2018, mm-hmm. 2019, uh, the profits uh, were going into anything that was coming into the business was going into branding the business and mm-hmm. uh, making mm-hmm. it visible on the outside market. Mm-hmm. So 2018, 2019, the mm-hmm. profits were minimal. Mm-hmm. And uh, 2020, now mm-hmm. the profits uh, were really tangible. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the, the profits were, I mean, the profits were tangible, and uh, the company utilized the profits mm-hmm. to grow itself, mm-hmm. get a, get a space, mm-hmm. and uh, yes, so mm-hmm. the, and the growth still the, continues. The, the, drio, the growth continues. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Wow. So, what is your strategy for this year? Uh, because every business has a stage. Uh, every business has a cycle, goes through a cycle. Yes. From startup, we go through growth. We go through a stage where you are realizing profit. So mm-hmm. what is your strategy from this phase moving yes. forward? From what I can say, I watch Kenya has, uh, has grown. Mm-hmm. The company uh, can comfortably operate as a company. Mm-hmm. And uh, what we want to do now is... Uh, expand our operations, mm-hmm. offer more services to our customers. Uh, besides now surveillance systems, we are looking to having systems that uh, provide the backup solutions for clients. Mm-hmm. Because you realize that uh, some of these uh, storage facilities, devices that uh, we have at uh, customer premises are limited in terms of space. Mm-hmm. In term, uh, I mean, you can get a storage uh, hard drive that is uh, 500 GB. Mm-hmm. You can get one that is two, uh, one GB. I mean, two, one, uh, two, one TB. Mm-hmm. Uh, that way. Mm-hmm. But uh, there's a ch- I have noticed that there's a challenge when uh, 
these drives get uh, drives get damaged and now customers cannot uh, get their footages okay so i'm, I'm looking at, uh, at, uh, at, a, at a solution whereby i can have uh, customers store their footages on the cloud mm-hmm. that's it that's a that's a setup that will uh, that uh, that will cost a lot for mm-hmm. the company mm-hmm. but it's a solution that uh, we are looking to Mm-hmm. so that uh, customers can have access to their footages wherever they have mm-hmm. even if uh, we have people we have uh, we have had scenarios where people have broken into organizations and uh, dismantled the systems mm-hmm. but with a cloud solution a cloud backup mm-hmm. uh, we still have the footage on the cloud you can still preview and uh, see what really happened mm-hmm. we are looking to that uh, we are looking to a cloud uh, computing uh, platform mm-hmm. for our customers so okay. that's our next move for the company okay yes so great that's a great plan you have there yes <laughs> yes and what are your costs what would you say are your major costs for the in the business um, costs in terms of uh, costs in terms of uh, of uh, like in a shop i would say maybe there is rent maybe there is water bills to pay maybe there are employees to pay yes. so in the surveillance business what are your major costs my major costs uh, mm-hmm. now uh, it's uh, my rented space mm-hmm. the office and the accessories mm-hmm. the space goes for around uh, 10000 mm-hmm. then uh, for an other overheads uh, whereby now I have to pay uh, I have to pay workers mm-hmm. uh, it's on a casual basis for okay. people I work with mm-hmm. if I have a job at uh, the moment how many people roughly do you work with? I have three okay I have three guys I work with mm-hmm. but uh, it's on a casual basis when mm-hmm. we have a big project I call them in they come they help mm-hmm. from the margin that we get uh, I give them their cut then mm-hmm. the next the, the, the remaining goes to the, to the company mm-hmm. so for salaries it's not a fixed cost because uh, i pay them per job mm-hmm. and for whatever remains now is it goes to the company there is my salary and mm-hmm. anything else that is coming in between mm-hmm. uh, there is also the cost of the uh, annual cost of the so website sorry, sorry to to interrupt you yes. what how much do you do you pay them a percentage of how much the job is worth the, this uh, casual helps yes there are those that uh, there are two guys that i pay depending on the size of the job mm-hmm. There are those who are paid per day. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are those who, I mean, there are those who offer them. Uh, there are those who offer jobs that uh, are paid uh, on daily basis. They mm-hmm. come, they agree. Okay, for this day, you'll give me this amount of money. Which is uh, in the range of how much? It's, the daily. Uh, if you have a, uh, someone who's going to do the manuals for you, mm-hmm. it's uh, between one thousand and two thousand. Okay. For the other two guys, it's a percentage cut. Okay. Uh, of, depending of how on how much what do you percent? make. Yes. What percent? 10, 25. If we, we get uh, 20,000 and there are two, mm-hmm. we look at now to to split it because now mm-hmm. uh, my split is normally 30,000 from the cl- I mean 30 percent from the client. Mm-hmm. Then now from this we sit down and agree. We make this amount of money. The mm-hmm. company gets this. Uh, we've done uh, transportation. We have done this and this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we uh, we agree on a cut. They are comfortable. Yeah. Give them their pay, mm-hmm. then the remaining goes to the. So it is really an arrangement where you have to let them know how much money has come in, yes. how much you have used on the costs, yes. and therefore how much you are willing to, to pay, pay them, them for yes. the services offered. Yes, because you realize uh, it's not normally a formal setup. Okay, okay. Because they are not on a payroll. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So roughly, how many clients do you think you can? Uh, how many clients do you see in a day, or in a week, or in? We so, we have uh, two set, sets of clients. Mm-hmm. We have new clients mm-hmm. and we have uh, recurring clients. Mm-hmm. New clients are those clients that are interested in a, in a service for the first time. Mm-hmm. And uh, once you have that client, now the client becomes a recurring okay. client. Okay. Calls come in each day. Mm-hmm. We want to check this. We want to check this. We add to add this. Mm-hmm. I have a client. I'm a new client. Sometimes businesses are tough. Mm-hmm. You can do ten instead. You can get. Uh, Ten new clients in a month, mm-hmm. but you can get twenty uh, calls for maintenance mm-hmm. and uh, system checks. Mm-hmm. Depending on, uh, it, uh, we can say that it, it's quite unpredictable. On, uh, it's quite unpredictable on, uh, on the number of customers you get. 
Mm. But as a company, we do projections. We say mm. we in a month we give us ourselves a target of ten customers, mm. new customers. Which translate into roughly how much money? Just roughly. In terms of the uh, when you look at uh, the scope of the business, yes. if uh, one customer is going to give you twenty thousand, mm. another one is going to give you fifty. Mm-hmm. You do the math. Mm-hmm. It's a good. Uh, it's, it's it's a good amount. Mm-hmm. Yes. One hundred thousand to. We couldn't say it's a good amount. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. We are speaking to Elisha Masesi, a proprietor at iWatch Kenya, who provides surveillance services to his clients. So there are very many different business ideas that you can think of. So in today's show alone, we see how Elisha is providing surveillance services to corporate companies, to homes, to individual customers and now he says his next move is to go into cloud and that just shows you the number of different business ideas that can arise from just one line of business and what is important from this show is they need to do research in whatever field you want to do your business in it's important to do research so that you know what need am i stepping into the market to fill like in his case he saw a need for surveillance services and even the ones that existed needed to be maintained or they needed to be improved in a way that suited the customer's need. Another important thing here is costing because it is clear from our conversation with Elisha here that on a day-to-day or in each project that he handles, he has to go into before he goes to a site visit who is going to cater for the costs of that site and he has to communicate it very well to the client so that it is somehow in the package that you will, you will eventually quote for the services that he offers so the costs the profit margins the mm. employees the wages even the communication with the employees to be able to determine how much then to pay the employees and even capital how much capital do i even need to put in place for this project to materialize do i need to buy equipment do i need to do this and eventually how do i calculate my profits so all those come into play and all that is happening in the show so stay tuned for more because we are going next into many many other things that only elisha Elisha can explain to us today so stay tuned to start that business show so what are the challenges that you come across in your day-to-day operations uh, in just like in any other business, mm. there are challenges. Mm. Uh, one of the biggest challenges is that uh, you realize that uh, iWatch can is a, it's quite a startup, mm. but uh, picking on one. Mm-hmm. So one of the challenges is the competition. You meet uh, you meet uh, big companies in the business. Mm-hmm. So for you to to for for me that's a challenge. Mm-hmm. So you have to devise ways. You have to come with methods of uh, really staying. Mm-hmm. on top of the game in such a competitive field mm-hmm. yes so that's a first challenge so the first challenge is competition the first challenge is competition yes and therefore how do you stay afloat in amid the competition how do you deal with the competition uh dealing with the competition first you realize that uh, these uh, big companies are well known out there mm-hmm. so now dealing with that competition is uh, to make sure that uh, your company is known and your customers are getting to know about it mm-hmm. to do that uh, you have to be present really present on the uh, on the on uh, different online platforms mm-hmm. you have to really have a good website mm-hmm. you have to do marketing on constant uh, marketing constant marketing on yes. instagram mm-hmm. facebook and whichever other platform that you may come across mm-hmm. you have to do posters you can uh, do the whole type of marketing where you print uh, posters give them to people and they go giving out into companies and mm-hmm. uh, selling your product to potential customers mm-hmm. So that's how you that's how we try that's how we try to fight competition and uh, stay afloat. Okay. Yes. So who are you targeting as your clients in your marketing? Uh just as I said we are target we are targeting uh, big companies, corporates, mm-hmm. we are targeting guys with go downs, we are targeting uh, residential areas, homeowners, mm-hmm. we are targeting uh mothers mm-hmm. who stuff their small babies. Mm-hmm. And uh, they will need to watch them as they go on their daily to daily activities. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also target, uh, we also target uh, car owners. Mm-hmm. Those will need uh, the cameras fitted on their vehicles. Mm-hmm. So it's another field uh, we are looking to. Mm-hmm. Yes, so those are mainly our customers. Okay. We also have uh, guys who want to go into the business mm-hmm. and uh, they have questions. 
mm. that's a falls under consultation okay so guys will want to go into the business we also offer consultation services mm-hmm. so that you are aware you get aware of what you're getting to mm-hmm. yes okay so we have really been talking about surveillance mm. so now what i want us to talk about is in dealing with this surveillance i will give an example yes if you go to see a doctor yes the doctor will tell you in my assessment i diagnose you to be suffering from this and yes. therefore i will give you this medicine yes so in your surveillance systems yes. and in, with the many customers that you see yes could you please give us examples of in surveillance i maybe fix this to sort this type of a need yes if with probably the mothers this is what i use for yes. them to be able to see their babies yes. in the different maybe home arrangements maybe yes. there's a new homeowner who would like to see what goes on into the home this is how i step in to be able to make them see this so yes yeah just a few examples in the three groups of customers that I've mentioned mm-hmm. you realize that uh, each customer has uh, different needs and mm-hmm. different preferences mm-hmm. starting with the corporate companies mm-hmm. uh, once we do the survey what we do is uh, we there are two uh, we, we choose from uh, two types of cameras we can either go with the analog cameras or we can go with the digital cameras mm-hmm. depending on uh, distance mm-hmm. and the size of the compound if uh, if uh, for instance if the, the the yard or the compound the premises of the company is within a range of uh, 100 meters mm-hmm. 100 meters mm-hmm. we can uh, go for analog mm-hmm. or still we can go for digital cameras mm-hmm. so we advise the customer depending on the budget mm-hmm. if we go for analog cameras what we do is uh, we look for strategic places where we can uh, put the cameras in store rooms in mm-hmm. uh, entrance points mm-hmm. and along the perimeter walls mm-hmm. to all those points there's an option of running cables to mm-hmm. each and every camera mm-hmm. there's an option of uh, using a uh, wireless camera mm-hmm. in most cases where we do cable uh, cameras because uh, we are really we realize that uh, they are quite stable okay. and the resolution is good in some other areas you realize that uh, a company has two sites Mm-hmm. and uh, they would like to link uh, the two the, the two the two sides uh, with a uh, one set of cameras mm-hmm. we also provide the point to point solutions to such companies in such a way that you know where while you are in uh, one company mm-hmm. you can still have a look at the, the cameras in the other in the other organization okay yes mm-hmm. so for for a corporate uh, setup uh, the number of cameras again depends on the size mm-hmm. the length of uh, the cables to use will also depend on the size of the compound mm-hmm. the size of the rec- uh, digital recording devices that we come with will also depend on the number of cameras mm-hmm. the storage unit that uh, goes into the system will also depend on uh, on the number of cameras that we put and also the requirements of the client mm-hmm. the client can choose to view the footages on the on site mm-hmm. the client can also choose to view the footage uh, offsite where we do we do we do peering to customer devices either at home mm-hmm. on the mobile phone or on the mobile phones so that uh, the customer does not uh, have to come to the premise to have a look at what is uh, what is going on mm-hmm. so it's a business owner you can run other businesses and mm-hmm. still have a, a view the of ability. what is ha- ha- happening in your business mm-hmm. When you come now to residential areas you realize that uh, most flats apartments uh, when you have an apartment you have tenants mm-hmm. you realize that uh, you 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 cannot really monitor people's houses mm-hmm. you just need to monitor entry points and the perimeter walls and uh, so what we do for residential areas and uh, apartments what we do is uh, we, to, we 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 get a room where we do our setup a room that is a uh, lockable mm-hmm. we do a setup there and mm-hmm. we run cameras to areas that are required for the for the homeowners to, for the homeowner to monitor activities mm-hmm. just outside the uh, just uh, within the perimeter mm-hmm. of the premise mm-hmm. and uh, chosen points so that you don't really you don't really go into the privacy of your tenants okay so when you go now to individual uh, homes mm-hmm. there are people who want to have cameras in their homes we mm-hmm. do a survey we are devise on the number of cameras mm-hmm. we choose a location where we we do now the setup mm-hmm. it's the still the same you can have a remote view of uh, what is happening in your home mm-hmm. 
we can also incorporate uh, the cameras with alarms mm-hmm. so that when you have uh, gone for a trip, mm-hmm. there's uh, an activity, there are movements that are in your place. You mm-hmm. get a notification on your phone mm-hmm. and you can uh, check mm-hmm. what is happening and mm-hmm. then you can uh, raise an alarm. Okay. Still on the same set of, uh, of homes, mm-hmm. we have uh, cameras that are designed to watch babies as they sleep, mm-hmm. cameras that are uh, fitted on uh, in the sitting rooms and areas where the baby is likely to go, mm-hmm. so that uh, you can really be comfortable with your with your nanny, mm-hmm. because you have had uh, incidences uh, where mothers have uh, really had uh, challenges uh, leaving their babies with uh, new nannies. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, we can uh, uh, have a setup where it's a nanny camera. You can watch your baby sleep. You can uh, watch your baby play around. You can watch the nanny take care of the baby. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know, when the mother can still view the camera remotely via the phone, mm. via the laptop. Mm. So it's quite an interesting uh, solution. Okay. Yes. Wow. I see a whole yes. range of solutions. Yes. Yeah. So what would you like to tell anybody who is out there who probably would be looking to start this type of a business in future? Uh, anyone uh, looking to start this business? Yes. So it's a good business. Uh-huh. It, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, you can make a career out of it. Mm-hmm. What I would like to tell you is that uh, study, your ma- uh, study the market, mm-hmm. uh, come up with a solution that is really sellable to people, a mm-hmm. solution that you can really convince people to buy. Mm-hmm. Have consistency, even if you go without a client for, for days, for weeks, for months. Mm-hmm. Uh, have your presence online, mm-hmm. talk to people, mm-hmm. give or you give your company a name, mm-hmm. brand yourself mm-hmm. and present yourself out there to potential buyers. because. Everyone is looking at a solution. Everyone wants a solution that uh, really work. If, mm-hmm. you have, uh, if you are doing surveillance systems, mm-hmm. give customers something that is uh, sustainable, sustainable within budget, mm-hmm. and something that uh, meets their needs. Mm-hmm. So the opportunities are there, mm-hmm. uh, the chances are there. Mm-hmm. Do your research, mm-hmm. uh, tag yourself to someone who knows the business, mm-hmm. grow with them. Mm-hmm. Then uh, once you feel ready to start your own business, you can always uh, start your own business. Mm-hmm. It's not capital intensive because you realize most of these things are bought by the customers. Yeah. If you want to stock, then now you start looking at uh, some capital to stock and get your own premises. Mm-hmm. Most importantly, uh, have the idea, mm-hmm. research on the idea, mm-hmm. uh, brand yourself. When, once you brand yourselves, uh, customers uh, will reach you, you will reach out to customers. Mm-hmm. Once you have some money from the business, the, the work that you'll get, you can uh, start the process of uh, having a proper registration of the company. Mm-hmm. Alternatively, you can, uh, you can work under a company that is established as mm-hmm. you learn and mm-hmm. grow. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Wow. The need for security has created a business opportunity in Elisha's case. So when we speak surveillance, we are looking at the different camera options that exist for homes. We are looking at different options that exist for offices and even for individual customers. But what is most important? First of all, do your research. Secondly, brand yourself so that as you come out, you are able to tell clients, I am so and so, who offers surveillance services and this is the type, these are the type of products that I offer for this range of customers. So be that specific. Another thing you must be open to is competition because competition has been there and it will forever be there. So be able to deal with competition, be able to set yourself apart from competition so that how am I better for my competitors? Do you want to maybe pick a pricing strategy? Do you want to maybe be slightly cheaper? And while doing that, be able to deal with your costs so that if you lower your prices, are you still able to make your profits? If you lower your prices, are you still able to offer value for money? Are you still able to deal with your costs like your rent and everything that you have to deal with? The costs and all employees, are you able to pay your employees? But above all, be consistent, be available, be even available to offer consultation beyond that and even to offer maintenance. So I'm more than educated today i have taken this walk today with elisha and i'm really really educated today in everything surveillance so i hope you too are. and elisha wow so elisha this was quite an eye-opener for me other than showing our viewers the business idea and how you were able to run how you started your business and how you were able to run it i have also learned now i know the different options that exist for different security situations 
and I know the type of considerations that somebody needs to make. For example, other than saying I want a wireless camera, I would then say I want a cable for my camera because now I know that they are more stable, they offer better pictures, more resolution. So I'm more delighted and I'm really happy that you let us into your business today and you were able to share with us the information. So thank you so much and uh, keep on pushing on and we wish you all the growth even as we still go through the remaining bit of the pandemic. I don't know how long the pandemic will take but since it has offered for you opportunities so I guess either way then all you need to do is to push on and continue discovering new opportunities. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. And, uh, thank you for coming and uh, thank you for having my show today uh-huh. and uh, it's my hope that uh, the show will impact uh, many people out there who are stuck into and uh, debating on whether to start or not to start mm-hmm. I'd like to tell them that the opportunities are there mm-hmm. just uh, choose wisely mm-hmm. do your research mm-hmm. and uh, it's my hope that uh, we will all emerge as uh, business owners and uh, entrepreneurs in this country thank you thank you